Uh, greetings. Welcome to the Truth to Power show and the Ron Mark show. Uh, we had a little technical difficulty, uh-huh. and we're getting it together, but Ron March is on the phone. Ron, are you there? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Can you hear okay. me clear? Yes, I yes. can. All right. Okay. And, uh, so what are we talking about tonight? Do we have any updates on the U.N. visit to Detroit? Well, I'm, I'm, yes, we do have an update. Now, I learned this from Bobby L., if you're in a battle or at war, you need to pay attention to everything that goes on because a lot of the conditions that you really see that you don't think is pertaining to you, it is pertaining to you. So what we have going on right now on the news all day, yesterday, today, and all over, we're talking about the prisoners down in Guantanamo. And it's so it's such a scathing report that came from the United Nations that they're talking about indicting Bush. And they're already talking about uh, Obama pardoning Bush before he gets out. Of, before he gets out. Right. Now, question is, what does that have to do with Detroit? Well, I know, Beverly, you know, and Detroiters know, that the U.N. came here and they uh, stated that the, the human rights have been completely violated in the city of Detroit on the sanitation, water, and the housing situation. Mm-hmm. So they went back and filed all those papers and all of that. They, the papers were so hard and strong, they were told to go to uh, 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 um, Geneva. So they went to Geneva. They looked at it. They sent the State Department uh, the, the Saturday after... The Saturday after um, okay, hold on. Nope. I can't take that splice. Uh, take the splice. Hold on, Bev. Okay. Splice it, Wally. Okay. Uh, you're listening to the Truth to Power show and the Ron March show, and uh, we're working on some technical difficulties, so just bear with us. Yes, uh, Ron is giving us an I'm, update on uh, the UN. Yes, this I'm back. Detroit. You back, Ron? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. the Saturday after, here's what it's, oh yeah, the last time I gave you a report was Wednesday before Thanksgiving when we were told that the United Nations sent the United States a scathing letter of the violations of the uh, human rights. And and they and they they specified Detroit at the time. They specified mm-hmm. Detroit. Well, the, the State Department sent Detroit a letter and gave them ninety days to clean up Detroit. The the fifteenth of December would be the ninetieth day of that mm-hmm. transaction. Okay. The the, uh, the uh, administration of Detroit stated that they would you know they had their own program and they were moving at their pace. And they were going to make changes, and it, it was not a good report. So Ma- Maureen Taylor got a hold of the report that the administration sent to the State Department and mailed it directly to the two ladies that came in here, those two repertoires that came in. And they sent back a letter to Maureen and said they will be back in February for a new investigation, another investigation. Now. But it's all that have to do with us. Saturday after uh, Thanksgiving, I was down in Carolinas, and I noticed a uh, bulletin on the news that the United Nations had moved on the United States severely with a scathing report that their actions along the lines of human rights were totally unacceptable. And I don't know any more about it because the report got shady but I jumped up and, and tuned in on it, and what they did, they talked about Cuba and the, and the uh, Guantanamo, Gitmo, but at the same time, they showed police departments using water holes on protesters. Now, that didn't, didn't jive with me, but they kept on talking about Gitmo. Then they switched and said that the police of, of departments of the United States are using too much excessive force when they are dealing with protesters. All right? So I 
go do research. I can't find anything that says specifically about Detroit or anything. But I did see online that the Brown family, Michael Brown's mother and father, were flown to Geneva a, a week ago before this report came out and filed a personal complaint against the Ferguson Police Department on the killing. Now, what does all of that mean? Today and yesterday, it's all over the news that the, the uh, CIA and the United States is under the gun for all of their activities that, they, that went on down in Gitmo. And they're squirming like a bunch of fags trying to figure out how they can get the pressure off of them because on the world level, everybody is, is ripping the United States led by Iran and Russia. So all of this is devastating. And I do know for a fact that in that report, which they haven't brought up yet, they did talk about police brutality, the water in Detroit. It was almost a conglomerate of all these uh, uh, violations that was put in with Gitmo. And so now it's coming out that the United States didn't even sign treaties that they have been a part of all of these years. You know, the United States very seldom signed treaties. There were four, I told you once before, there are four nations that vote against indigenous people every time, every year, the Declaration of Human Rights uh, of conventions come up. There had always been four nations that voted against all of the rest of the nations voted in favor of. Oh, no, about seven abstentions, but the majority of them voted in support of indigenous people. And I asked you one time, Ben, did you know what those four countries were? And I'm just going to tell them to you now. It's okay. uh, Australia, New Zealand, United States, and Canada. And the next question is, what does these four countries have in common? The Europeans are invaders, and every one of those countries has indigenous people who are refugees in their own land. We, I'll say it again, black folks in America are refugees in their own land and don't even know it because they've been educated to think they're part of this trash that they're getting murdered from and they don't have anything to do with it. You got it? I got it. So you're saying that Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and the United States. Yes. Okay. Now, at this point, all four have signed an agreement to support indigenous rights, but only the only United States, it was signed by Obama. They never voted on it in the United States. So you can call that a half hands approval or something like that. I don't know. But they, the way they did it in the United States, they're on the border. They, they can say yes and they, or they can say no. Okay? What, what, wait a minute. Who can say yes and who can say no? The Congress of the United States, the Europeans in America, can say no, we did not sign it. And they would be correct because Obama signed it. Only Obama. He didn't Donald, sign it. Donald Obama represents the United States, isn't he the CEO? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, he is. But the way I understand it, and the way it's online, if you look it up, I think it was signed in 2012. Obama signed the Indigenous Rights Declaration in the United Nations. And if you read it, and you'll see that it's not the same type of signature as because nobody told us the United States don't want the world to even recognize that indigenous people are here. Because we're here and so dumb and stupid, we don't even know we're indigenous. Right. So why should they say anything? We're asking for our own demise. And now, as we go into night, to the night presentation, this is one of the problems that we have because we don't know our history have no idea who we are, so as a result, they take advantage of us through corporate law. And the most devastating uh, component of corporate, of, of corporate law is 
acquiescence, meaning they will put you in positions and you have no idea that you're in it. And that's a legal contract. They call it acquiescence. Now, I know what you're going to say there. You done studied and found out it takes two signatures. Mm-hmm. It takes two agreements. It's got to be uh, equal compensation on both ends of the equation. All of that's true. But if you don't know that, they can do anything they want to do to you. You don't have rights if you don't exercise your rights. You follow me? Gotcha. So all of these black kids that jump up talk about, I got my rights. They, they violated my 14th Amendment. That's not true. Because you're not a 14th Amendment citizen. Now, as long as they, as you're dumb, they'll call you a citizen of the 14th Amendment. Until you find out that you're not, they're going to disown you. Or if you're going to try and sue them, they can disown you and say that you're not a citizen because you belong to America. And we want to talk about that tonight. America. There are so two there's, there's a difference between America and the United States. Of- yes, yes. Yes, yes. Say that again. Yes, there's a difference between United States and America. Because you have North America, South America, Central America, and you have United States. And when you read documents, it's it's worded correctly the way it should be. For example, when Lincoln became the first president of the United States, he was the first president of the United States. But we assumed from our illiterate education that they were talking about the United States of America. There was no United States of America in 1700. The United States of America was founded in 1871. I'll say that again. <laughs> United States of America, Inc., was incorporated in 18. 18- 1871. So it's a lie when they say we was in slavery for 400 years, because that ain't no 400 years from 1871 to 2014. But since we have been taught in these trash ass trash schools, excuse me, man, these old nasty schools, these old public nasty schools, they have brainwashed us. We're a bunch of mummies, ignorant mummies walking around. Those that are educated are trained better, get a degree, and get a better job. Those that do not, they throw them to the wolves and call them niggers, colored and blacks. They label them, but they'll call uh, Obama president, for example, and then they'll call that one, uh, his buddy who had the Ph.D., uh, Skip. Skip, what's his last name? Skip. Woo! The one that they... That the sheriff went in his house and slapped that nigga and told him and arrested him in his own house. You know what I'm talking about. What was his name? That professor. He's a professor at Harvard or Howard University. Oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. He had, yeah. he had lost his keys and he went yeah. around to the side door to go in. And his neighbor, now, of all people, a neighbor didn't know who he was, thought he was a. <laughs> called the police. He got in the house. They come in, he got pictures and certificates and PhDs and all kind of stuff all over the house that looked like him, and the cops still arrested him. And then Obama, out of his uncle, out of his madness, invited the cop and the, the blackie to the White House to drink beer and eat peanuts. That's a total disgrace to humanity. Lewis you know what I'm talking about? Henry Lewis Gates. Yeah, I know who you're talking yeah. about. Henry Louis Gates. They call him Skip Gates. Yeah. You know what I mean? I so we're, we're really in trouble. Because Skip Gates is as dumb, you me clear, as one of them brothers standing on the corner with his pants on his butt or his hat on backwards. And everybody, you know, cop on the lock up. Skip ain't no difference. Look what they're doing to uh, 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 Bill Cosby. Yeah. They, they are raking him through the coals. And all these charges are upwards of 40 years old. I don't condone rape. I, and that ain't got nothing to do with my comment. 
I'm saying that as long as they was making, they knew he was doing to them girls when he was doing it. I read an article today that Hugh Hefner said that he had come, he'd been hanging out in the Playboy Club with all, <laughs> back in the day with all them young fine girls in there. And Hugh immediately said, the girl's lying because I don't have no kind of trash in my facilities because I'm being watched so much. I can't afford to have them shut down, which is a right. comment. Yeah. So I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm not even into that because he got to handle what went down the pike. I would think surely it happened because them girls are fine as they wanted to be 40 years ago. And I know he was taking advantage of them, and I know that the system will sick them girls on you along with drugs and alcohol and all kind of crap. A lot of them are hung up in it now. So I know what's happening. I've been there. <laughs> yeah, I've been there once. Oh, you've been there, Ron. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> I've, been there. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. I know what's that. So anyway, all of that to me is our, is our fault because we're taking for granted everything that that European gave us is truth. And that's where our, our fallacy lies, right in there. Now, I'm going to make a bold statement, and we can discuss it for the rest of the night. I don't care. But I'm going to say to you now, Beverly, that every prosecutor in the United States so-called judicial system is a criminal. Now, you're going to say or you should say, Ron, how can you say that? You don't know. You don't. Stop. Stop the madness. Just look at where, why I said that. We know of three prosecutors right now who are are suspiciously under the microscope for their conduct. That would be Ferguson, uh, Long Island, and Florida. They already indicted, they didn't indict the chick in Florida, but they, uh, what do they call it? They uh, uh, sanctioned her for hiding evidence that would have convicted Zimmerman and to to give that boy dead boy justice, and nobody know about it. It's on it's on the internet. Don't say it to me. I've looked that up. I saw it. Now, what does that all mean? I, it means this: that the system of of prostitu- I can't use the word say it prostitutorial process is so flawed that every prosecutor uses the same system. They all are locked to the judge to the police department. They hand to hand with the police department. They have to take the report from the police department. They have to make a case from the report from the police department. I call them criminals because they have the opportunity to win every case. Why? If they can't do it legally, they can do it illegally, and nobody will know anything about it. You get it? All right. If if they if they were sincere like like now, if they were sincere on on correcting this, they go right into that issue and make changes or give some type of oversight for the prosecutors not to be uh, uh, railroaded or threatened by the police department. You dig it? You got prosecutors out there that'll stay for ten years, and their record is a nine. They'll tell you my record is ninety five percent conviction, and I'm running for governor now. Oh, he's a good prosecutor. No, he ain't. He's a crook. <laughs> he's a damn crook. You dig? Now, down in down in Ferguson, you remember the the family of of Michael Brown hired a independent autopsy to put on Michael to find out how he was killed. You recall? Right. You recall that. The guy that they hired was an old European that had a, a beard and white hair. He was kind of heavy set. But his partner or his assistant was a little short guy that was had black hair and a, and a black beard. You recall? They have found out, or better yet, it's coming out that the short guy don't even have a license. Yeah. And he did the autopsy. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and 
And the autopsy that he did is a it's not it's not that it's illegal. You cannot use it in court because he's not a, a certified uh, autopsy guy. But guess what? He's done over ten or fifteen autopsies for the police department in Missouri, and all of them are in jail from his testimony. And guess what they said? Why they don't want to open up those other cases? Because too many of them might get turned around. Turned around, and there's too many lawsuits. Think about that, Beth. They don't no. see. Yes, go ahead. But well, what about the people that is locked up? Can't they uh, have their attorney to open their cases again? Well, now you don't open up another do a can of worms. Let's start with what you just said. Every attorney has a P number. And the only way you can get that P number is to swear under oath, blood oath, that he will not screw up and embarrass the prosecutor, the judge, or the queen. The bar. Everybody says, I'm a member of the bar. Ask them, what is the bar? Half of them don't even know. Plus, the more blackies, they don't know. Because anybody that go around and put Esquire on their business card has to be an idiot. Because that's treason. To put that on your card is treason. You dig it? And tell All them right? why, Ron. Why is it treason? Because Article 1, I got the Constitution in my hand. So just hold on. Hold on, baby. Hold on. Article 1, Section, let me get this section. Section 8. Article 1, Section, no, Section 9. Article 1, Section 9. And it's about, it's the last paragraph in Section 9. Here's what it says. No title of nobility shall be granted by the United States. That's the first sentence. I'll say it again. No title of nobility shall be granted by the United States. That visitor we have now, the Duke and the Duchess, those are titles of nobility. Esquire is a title of nobility. That, that nigga named G Jazz and that Beyonce, whatever they, what is his name? Jay Z. Jay Z. Jay -Z and they call him Sir Jay Z. He been knighted. He is a, he is an esquire. Now he's not practicing law, but it's illegal. Just read it in the Constitution. No title of nobility shall be granted by the United States. So if it's not granted by the United States, who granted the, these lawyers the title of nobility? The queen. The queen. So their first allegiance is to England. How are they going to save your child? Or how are they going to go and upset? Like you just asked me the question, man. Why don't yeah. somebody go and reopen the case? If they do, they will put their lives and their careers and their job online. You dig it? Yeah. <laughs> and what do uh, bar, when they got to pass this bar, they have to pass the bar examination. The bar, B-A-R, that's an acronym for British Accredited Registry. Registry. Mm -hmm. British Accredited Registry. Now, what they did in 1933 to throw people off, a lot of them are looking at you and say, I'm not a member of the bar. I'm a member of the ABA, American Bar Association. It's the same crap. And all it is is a membership card to the queen. And the judge will stand up there and tell you up there, are you practicing law without a license? And everybody gets panicky. So you say to him, are you practicing law without a license? He'll say, I got a P number. That's a, that's a membership card. I got a P number when I went to the golf course. When I bowl every week, I am got a P number in the bowling alley. Same thing, but yeah. we're not. We don't. We don't know it. So we, you know. Now, if I said it the way I just said it, he gonna throw me in jail. Or no, he won't throw me in jail. He'll throw me in a crazy house and say that I'm, I'm a danger to myself or to his slaves. Because if I talk to the slaves like you talking to them, you are gonna make them upset, and they might kill a few whites. 
So we're going to put you in the crazy house to see if you're crazy. That's happened, man. Yeah. That really has happened. Now, I, I'm going to give you a scenario. And this started last week when we talked about DNA. I asked the question, where did DNA come from? Nobody knows. When did you first hear of DNA? I'll ask you, Beth. When did you first hear of DNA? It hasn't been too long ago. Um, right. I think I first heard about it. It might have been in the 90s. Let me, I'll tell you exactly when you heard about it. First time. O.J. Simpson's trial. Okay. What was that? Was that in the 90s? I, I don't know. But that's when you heard about it. Okay. Because that's the first time. In in the, in my knowledge, and this is really heavy, that they're going to use DNA to free a black man that killed a white woman. That's a no no. Yeah. And guess what? Johnny Cochran died suspiciously. Oh yeah. Now I am sure they told that nigga, "Don't you use that DNA in this trial." Especially for a black man that killed a white woman. <laughs> and, and, the, and the Kardashian daddy left here too. He's he's dead too. So I don't know. Get, get her phone numbers and the and the. We got it. We got it squared away. I'm. We gonna take. What time is it? How long? We six forty one. Six forty one. We got started a little late. Let's go for another 15 minutes, man. Take a break, and then we'll flip over to WebEx. Okay. That's good. All right. Now, let's go back and talk about criminals in the criminal system. Everybody's talking about making adjustments. They're talking about body cam for the police department. Notice how arrogant the police department is. Switch to the CIA. Then I went back and got three former CIA directors. And every one of them said, if we had to do it, we'll do it again. We did it for the country. We did it for to save America. We know it was wrong. We didn't really want to do it. But we did it in the name of democracy. Now, that's the most ugly thing you could ever say because Nowhere in the Constitution of the United States is there is the word democracy. Now think about that. So what is, where does this democracy come from? What are we talking about when we say democracy? Can you give me a definition of democracy, Betty? Of yeah, democracy? My, my rule. My rule. He who has the big stick wins. If I got 30 people in a room and I got a Uzi, I'm the kingpin. I run everything in here. You get out of line, pop a cap in here. So, so, they, so it, they just like Al Capone then, huh? Yes, yes. They don't have a choice. Because in order to keep this de facto government from 1871 in place, you got to have an army and a strong police department. Because you got to rule by fear. Think about it. That's why all the police have a red light. A green light, not a red light. Got a green light. And that's why, did I read you the, uh, the, uh, I'm talking so fast I get nervous. Did I read you the oath, or did you know that all police officers take two oaths when they join the police department? Did you know that? Oh, I know they said an oath, but I didn't know they said two. They take two. And I got a copy of the, and this one that I'm going to read you is the first oath. Beverly? Uh, tell Chaos that uh, we can't, he's talking too loud. Okay. Uh, Wally. Picking up all that noise you're doing over there. You got to get quiet. Yep. Okay. Here's here's the here's the first here's the old. Okay. It's a new member obligation. That's what it's called. Here we go, Beth. Okay. The new member obligation in the presence of the Creator of the universe 
and the members of the fraternal order of police here assembled, I do most, most solemnly swear and sincerely promise that I will, to the best of my ability, ability comply with all the laws and rules of this order, that I will recognize and authorize of my legal elected officers and obey all orders therefrom, not in conflict with my religion or political views or my right as an American citizen, that I will not cheat, wrong, or defraud this order or any member thereof or permit the same to be done if in my power to prevent it that I will at all times aid and assist a worthy brother or sister in sickness or distress so far as it lies in my power to do so. They didn't say legal power, they said in their power to do so. That I will not divulge any of the secrets of this order or anyone not entitled to receive them. To all of which I most solemnly and sincerely promise and swear, shall I violate this, my solemn oath or obligation, I hereby consent to be expelled from the order. And then you put your signature on. Now, that's scary. That's the first one they take. That's the first order they take. Now they take the order to serve and protect. That's the one that you that they tell us about. But the order is the first order of business, because that's the first oath they take. That's unbelievable. Mm. Yes, you're right. And as long as they take that oath, there will never be a change in the police conduct, because that oath is a ticket. As long as you are upholding the order, and who knows what the order is? But as long as you're upholding the order, uh, you are in the the, the 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 blessing, if you will, of the uh, corporations. Mm -hmm. Now we got an uh, echo, gentlemen. Yeah, oh, yeah, we do have an echo. Something is open or something there. Yep, they're over there. Yep, good. It's all right now. Can you hear me, Beth? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Now, I'll ask. Is, is this need to be talked about on TV. Some of those uh, pundits, those black legal pundits, need to bring this question up. They can't do oh. that. They won't be invited back on TV anymore. You no, know, you're right. But I'm just telling you. All mayors that are elected in any capacity or any city of any strength has to have the corporation's backing before they can get elected. Yes. Uh, now that's a, 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 everybody know that, okay? So now I'll ask, where does the chief of police come from? He's the one that puts these crooks out on the street to, to, to get you. Where did he come from? The mayor. He was appointed by the mayor. He only answers to the mayor. Right. So what happened to democracy in that position? You dig it? Now I'll ask, where does the police come from? The police come from a, let me call it a secret order, but the police come from a secret employment office in the police jurisdiction. So they can pick and choose who they want in the beginning to come into the order. Mm -hmm. you, you dig it? So now when you put them on the streets, where is their allegiance? Now everybody's fake because they got all that crap painted on the side of the car. We're here to protect and all of that. Or somebody's going to jump up and say, I don't care what you say, Ron. We need police because we got these bums and blah, 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 crooks in our neighborhood, all of that. Well, people don't really understand that crime is controlled by the corporations. If you take jobs, opportunities, and self-determination from a group of people, a selected group of people, crime is going to increase. No ifs and buts about it. 
But nobody even brings that up. They don't even get into that type of discussion. You know, they just say, well, black on black crime and uh, this, this, this. Uh, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. My grandmother got stuck up last week and Ron March can go to hell with all that crap he's talking. You're right, because I'm talking to a fool. I, you know, I'm not going to argue with him. But everything that's happened to us, I told you last week, man, about the mice in the box. And the mice in the box, you can feed them. If, or do you recall when we talked about the mice, man? Yeah, yeah. And so you can control those mice condition and their social capacity by giving more food, less food, more water, less water. You can do the same thing with jobs. You can do the same thing with opportunity, with recreation. You know, it's no coincidence that all the bowling alleys left Detroit and went to the suburb. That was by design. And Detroit, Michigan, in 19, my engineers know about this, Wally, Detroit in the 70s, 80s, 60s, 70s, and 80s was the biggest bowling leagues in the United States. Am I right or wrong? Remember when we were bowling with Fable? We had more bowlers in Detroit then than any city in the United States. Mm. And when the Europeans saw that, he shut down every bowling alley in Detroit and moved them to the suburbs. Now, just take, you know, think about that for a minute. And then you go to the suburb, they're going to give you tickets because you got to go in and out. So now they're going to make more money because they're going to do tickets on you. Police going to give you tickets, parking, and all that kind of stuff. You dig it? Mm -hmm. All of it's by control. And nobody ever brings that up. The same thing happened with the riots from the 60s to 2000. Every riot that we know of, and, and notice that they call them riots. We never did call them riots. The news media called them riots. Then they hung on race riots, okay? As soon as they could get a black or whitey involved, they called them race riots. But if you recall in 1967, when they had the so-called rebellion in Detroit, there were more white people looting on Grand River than there were black folk. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> they didn't call it a race riot. They didn't say they rioted and burning their own buildings. Now, I tell you that we didn't burn our own buildings. They burned our buildings. Why? Because they wanted to destroy our economic base. There's no economic base in Detroit. Up and down, seven mile east side, west side, you got barbershops. Three or four barbers in there with no license or they're only doing enough hair to, to you know, to make it, make a living, you know. Or you got heck, the chicks doing the hair, you know. You only got the store that do the hair, they're doing that. They can't hire nobody, you dig? So what they've done systematically, they've destroyed our economic base. So we have to go to the suburbs. Look at all the commotion they did over on Grand River and 8 Mile, tore up that, uh, that golf course to bring in a, a super Kmart. And I don't know if you've been over there lately, but that sucker's closed. Yeah, but I was over there, yeah. Yep, it's closed up. And that's just one. All the Walgreens that came in, not all of them. Most of them in the black community, they're closed. You did? But what is that about? You see what I'm saying? And, and we don't have enough insight or intelligence to talk about that when they put that microphone in our face. I think that, that young lady on MSNBC, her name is uh, Vanessa Perry. Well, then let's see, got two last names. I can't think of it. But you need to listen to her sometime, Beth. She's on on Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. That young lady is hot, and I found out her mama is white and her daddy's black, but that don't bother me because mm -hmm. she's, she's a hellraiser. And last Saturday, she ran a program so tough that I had to record it because she was telling us all the damage the police had done to us since 1963. I think the death toll for black young black males has skyrocketed through that period of time from two when they said they was going to bring in the civil rights movement, 
And you know what happened in Detroit with uh, a stress back when Coleman Young come in. They was killing black boys like going to, going, to, going to work every day. If you didn't kill one, you didn't belong to the secret order and all of that. I am sure that Wilson went out there to kill that black boy because he wanted to be part of the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But see, all of that kind of stuff they don't want to talk about because it's hard to prove because they make all those police officers commit crimes. So if they get out of line, they'll turn them in. All of them going down. When they had the Algiers Motel murders during the 67 Rebellion, two black boys had three white girls in the Algiers Motel over on Woodward. A nigger named Demukes was a, was a rental pig at the gate. He went out in the street and flagged down police cars and told them that black boys had white girls in, that, in one of them units. Hmm. Do you know them cops? Eight of them went in there and it ended up all eight of them killed those two black boys, and all of them got shot by each cop, so each cop couldn't talk on each other of, the, of, of, of each other. And nobody went to jail. No one went to jail. Them boys are like 19, 20 years old. So my point to you is this, man, point to, my, to the audience. What you see on TV today is not new, so don't try to act like it just started because Obama's in office. Bull crap has been going on since 1871 when they created this fictitious, phony corporation called United States of America. And in order to make it work, they had to put the fear of God in all of the constituents because you can't run a democracy unless you spread fear. Because like you say, man, it's a mob rule. Yeah. So you got to control the mob. All they got all they got to do is go look at one of those Al Capone movies. Yes. Yes. And that's it's what awesome. you're dealing with. All right, babe, it's going on 7 o'clock. Let's okay, take 10 goodbye. minutes. And we gonna... Yep. That's okay, when, when we come back, we have two callers that's been holding on. So we'll yeah. take the call. You think we should take them now? Yeah, well, let's take them now. All right. Uh, cool. Okay, area code 314761. Hey, hey. Peace and love, peace and love. Hello. Hey, you hear me? Peace and love. Peace and love. Yeah, peace and love. Can you hear me? Yes, Can you hear, me? hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Peace and love. Peace and love. See you. Hey, no. Uh, how you doing? Uh, my name is Shia, and uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Marsh probably know of me, and, uh, and I just wanted to call it and, and add to uh, some of the information that, that will probably help everyone, and I'm gonna keep it very concise. And uh, I have some information concerning. Uh, it's called the. It's called the. They call the you. It's called the terrorcrats. The terrorcrats or organization that the Europeans and other races go up under certain codes called the Libra Codes to conduct their businesses in sublime function. And so they need backup, right? Well, the backup is the authorities to those organizations. It's a website that you can go on and validate this about this particular company, and it's and it's called Terra Libra. You just type it up online and look it up, and they tell you these are I mean, all the sublime the Terra Libra. Well, we're and gonna need some more information, brother. You need to email me that because I can't understand what you're saying. Well, I, well, I, well, I think I emailed you that already. Well, to to to, to connect with the things that you're saying, how they well, how they keeping the order of 1871, the secret order of 1871. Yes. Okay. Yes. How they do this? How they do this? City, subtly and insidiously, right in our face, with a smile on your face, with all the other Europeans that's out there marching with everybody and everything like that. These particular people have. Business contracts with this particular company. It's a company unbeknownst to melanated people or autochthon people or Aboriginal people that it's a company that you can learn sublime business strategy 
to conduct resources and freedom for sovereignty for yourself over people like us, basically. Oh, wow. oh yeah, that that's good. I I know about that. Uh, when what I was saying in business, it, 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 go ahead. But that's a that's a marketing strategy. Correct. And they show well, them how to take advantage. Correct. It's, now I know we know yeah, this. We know that on, off top. But what I'm saying is how it coincides with the situations that we've seen on TV and things like that, based on the law. Because the Libra codes, the opposition of the Libra codes is the Bill of Rights. They they compartmentalize the laws based on channeling on in polarity. It's like it's a duel. So, like, wow. constitutional law versus color law. It's a, a color specific... Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's a specific subject yeah. matter that you have to focus on what challenges that in duality based on yeah. the subject matter of the facto and the jour. You get my point? So they have a full yeah. foundation process of the... I call them the four Ds. It's for democracy. To The one first D is to dictate... The dictate, they teach you the languages and linguistics in the school and the college social programs, ETC. Then the, the second D is to delegate the authority, the police, army, weaponry, and surveillance technology. The third D wow. is to, dem to demonstrate chilling, shooting, right. riots, author uh, authority right. protocols. All right, hold on. Hold on, brother. Hold on. Hold on, Scott. You need to be... On my Saturday show, I know who you are. I will get in contact with you, and you and I will do a one-on-one -on -one this coming Saturday at 4 o'clock. So get, your, get yourself set up, and we will explore all of this knowledge that you're saying because you're telling some good stuff, but it's, 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 it's going so fast, I'd have to keep stopping you so the people Yeah, I'm trying to cram it in too so, much. I, and I don't think, because they do need to be slowed down yeah. because it's, 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 it's imperative yeah. that we yeah. look into this. So Most let's, definitely. let's back off. I know who you are. I'll get in touch with you, and we'll go for a one-on-one -on -one this Saturday at, at, on my station, and, I, and we'll talk about it, okay? Okay, no problem. Is that good? All yeah, right. that's what I appreciate great. the call. Go ahead to right, the next caller, Beverly. Thank yep. you, caller. All right, thank you. You got another one? Uh, seven six three three nine one. Area yeah, that's me. You got me? Okay. Yes. Got hello, 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 hello. Yeah. Uh, first of all, you kept, you kept. I want you to go back and after your break and uh, go back and study because you kept saying you kept reading. They can't put Esquire, but then you put. You said. You said United States, not United States of America. So when they put that down, they are United States of American citizens. Thus, they can say Esquire after their name. Lawyers can put it down after their name. It hit me like a ton of bricks when you kept running it because I have heard you say yeah. it enough yeah. times. And, I, yes. and so I, well, let I me jumped, come back I jumped on the chat room and read it, and I tried to call to tell you, because that's yep. how they get away right. with it. Don't you go nowhere. When we <laughs> come back from break, I'm going to set your butt on fire and clear that up. How about that? And we'll be right back after this pause for the call. <laughs> Hold on, Paul. Okay, Ron. We'll be back in 10 minutes. All right. I know the caller's still out there. He's wait. He's waiting on me. Are you there, caller? Did you wait? No, he 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 left. I don't. All right. Well, we'll, we'll still deal with him. He can hear you. Okay. Now he was questioning me on um, Article Nine and the last section. I need to count this and see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's it's section is Article One, Section Nine, Paragraph Eight is where I talked about no title of nobility shall be granted by the United States. Now, when we say, when I say that 
Now when I say that the lawyers with their P numbers are obligated to the Queen, not United States. His argument was that they're not treason because they're in United States of America, not United States that I read from. Now, my position on that is the de facto government that the lawyers are representing that they're in is treasonous because it does not exist because it's a democracy and there's no uh, 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 article to recognize a democracy. Do, do you understand that, Ben? Do you understand what I'm saying? Repeat. Say that one more time. The, the United States of America is an illegal entity because the Constitution, nowhere in the Constitution does it say that they recognize the United States of America. Even in the preamble, it says, oh, here we go, oh, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity. Do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. So now, the preamble of the Constitution says that this was set up for the United States of America. Now that solidifies my position more because Article 1, Section uh, 8, uh, Paragraph 17, Article 1, Section 8, get over here. Paragraph section eight. Paragraph uh, seventeen says to to exercise exclusive legislation to all cases whatsoever over such districts not to exceed ten square miles as made by secession of particular states and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of the government of United States, the seat of the government of United States sits at uh, Washington, D.C., the seat of United States. But they changed the name from the seat of United States to institute a corporation known as United States of America. Now, United States of America comes under the Constitution and the laws of the Constitution. And the laws of the Constitution in Section 9, and I hope that brother is listening because I know he's going to call either call in or call me tomorrow, and we'll be wrestling with this. But Section 9, I mean, excuse me, Article 1, Section 9, Paragraph 8 says, no title of of nobility shall be granted by the United States. So they cannot grant it in United States, which is the seat of government, which is 10 square miles of Washington, D.C. They violated every law by creating a corporation in the color of law and called it United States of America. And then they set up the law departments and went on and set up the bar and all of that illegal madness. So what you're saying is that everything that they created after they created this corporation, the United States of America, is illegal anyway. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now, when they created the United States of America, they only had 13 colonies, 13 states, but they were set up to do commerce 
for the Moors, for Britain, which now is the queen. But first problem they had, there were no workers. There were no Chrysler Corporation and the UAW, Ford Corporation and the UAW, Chrysler Corporation and the UAW. UAW represented workers or slaves for the big three. When they set up the uh, Corporation of the United States of America, there were no workers. So what they did, acquiescently, they said all of the 14th Amendment citizens are citizens of the United States of America, which made everyone in America a citizen of United States of America. And so you can't do that. Everyone in America became a citizen of that corporation. On paper, yes. Through contract, acquiescence, contract. Acquiescent contract is only valid until you realize you're in an acquiescent contract and you declare by notice that I don't want no part of it. It's over with. But I thought a contract, two people had to sign it. They do. They do. But in so corporate is, law... How is it valid if we didn't know about it? Because you did not deny it. Remember the story I told about the gentleman in church? And, yeah. and the lady turned her head up and walked away? He offered her a contract, and she re she didn't refuse it. She just walked away. She didn't say yes. She didn't say no. Because she told the police officer, I didn't say nothing. Which meant that she approved it. That is an affirmative. When you say nothing and do nothing, it's an affirmative that you agree with the contract. Mm. Now, who came up with that? Corporate law. Okay. Corporate law now, corporate, came up with that. Co corporate law is if this is an illegal corporation, everything they do is illegal. <laughs> yes, you're totally correct. So, so the uh, law that they got in effect, in effect is illegal. Yes. Now, and this is very important. This is very important. In 1795, and I do have the law, but I, I don't have it in front of me. It was ruled through, whoo, good gracious of life, through, um, oh, man, I almost called the name of the law. But what the law says, by the Supreme Court in, in 1795, I know that to be true, it said this, any corporation that does business in any manner with human beings or natural persons must show up and be treated just like another natural person. Now, I got to get that law and read it to you, and I'll do that next week. But that law is called, oh, they don't, they hate for you to bring it in court because they do not like that law, which meant that due to the Article 4 of the Constitution, where it says you have a right to face your accuser, you cannot face a corporation accuser. So corporations are fictitious entities. I don't know how it even got in existence, to tell you, tell you the truth. Now, what about, what about this new ruling that they made that the corporation is human? Yes. That's the... See, people, out of their ignorance, they got upset over that ruling. I said it, and I'll say it again. That was the best ruling that could ever happen because that ruling supported the, the ruling that I'm trying to tell you existed and was founded in 1795, which said if you have any conflict with a corporation, they, corporation, must show up. So if they're human, where are they? They cannot send a representative. They cannot send no. their esquire. No, no, they cannot. 
You have a right to face your accuser, and the accuser is not a, 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 a third-party debt collector, a, 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 you know, a lawyer, uh, some representative that, that's a, a board of directors. Oh, no. You can't do that. I'm looking for General Motors to come in here and tell me that I violated his rights, and it's totally impossible. So this, all, so, uh, this is a Ford company. So the Ford, one of the Ford members who is the chairman of the board, uh, the CEO, uh, they can't come in and represent the corporation Ford. Okay. No, they cannot. Because you, first of all, when you swear them in, you're going to ask them who they are. And they got to tell you, I'm, I'm John Smith. I'm on the board of directors of General Motors. Well, General Motors sued me. Where is General Motors? You're right back at square one. What about, when they, what about when they sign their name and they sign representative, or I forgot what, how they worded uh, when in place. Uh, it was supposed to be that they sign in for the corporation. Well, I'll say this to you. The next time you see that, call me real fast. They stop that because people are waking up that they can sue them for fraud because they're not that, but they say they are. And here's another, here's another caveat. If a lawyer shows up in court and says he's representing um, a General Motors and the judge said, sit down, Ron March, he's going to represent it, and then we're going to move on. And I'll say, first of all, I object. And the judge said, well, I just told you that we're going to do it. You say, I'm not objecting to that. I'm objecting, objecting to. I want to see the DOA, Delegation of Responsibility, I mean, Delegation of Authority, DOA, that General Motors told this trick, whoever he is, that he is to be here to represent them. They can't do it. Because General Motors don't have hands. General Motors cannot talk. Even though they say General Motors is human now. Yes. Well, if they're human, bring them in court. And let's put them on the stand and let me cross-examine General Motors. That's all. That's simple. Mm -hmm. I hear where you are, and I wish I could say something that would alleviate your... I don't know, you're feeling that what they said, that to me, when they did that, that was a big joke. When the Supreme Court ruled that corporations are human, it was a joke. Now, what about the Supreme Court? Is there any legality with them? They Are they part, are they created out of this corporation? The Supreme Court has, wears two hats. One is to be uh, to be of the of the uh, United States of America. Most of them are, or they'll rule as a, a federal government, which would be represent the Constitution. See, all of the rulings from the Supreme Court is not about the Constitution. It could be about uh, women's rights or something like that. But if you're if you're going to charge them with violating your constitutional rights, they have to set up what is known by the courts as an Article Three court. And that is Article 4. You know, all of this is right here. I've been in this mess so long. I, I wish I could just flip right to it. But I'll just read, and to make sure I got the right one, Article Three court comes under what? Article, hold it, here we go, here we go. The, the judici Article 3, the judicial power of the United States. Notice they say United States because they're talking about the 13 colonies. Okay. Shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. So they're talking about... Third Circuit, 36th District, and all of that. But they got to do it under the United States, not under United States of America. Because United States of America is color of Constitution, and the United States is the Constitution. 
It seems complicated, but you, if you got to work with it, and once you realize that, you'll understand clearly what I'm saying. Color of law is something that looks like the real thing. And all of the laws of United States of America are color of law. You can look that up. You can look up color of law. And it'll tell you, it's a image of the real thing, but it's not the real thing. It's a fake. It's a fake. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we so got a in, call, Ron. Do you want to take a call real quick? Yes, yes. Yes, I will. Uh, While I'm looking ask, for something. Hey, ask Rod, are you there? Can you hear me, Beverly Martin? Yes, we can. How you doing, Ron March? I'm very good, sir. How are you? <laughs> Did you see an article that was posted on Facebook of a bill our beloved president has signed and passed? Dealing with, um, let me pull up Bill one second. I think it's called the protest. Yes. Come on. Come on. All right. Yeah. It. Oh. It, okay. It, he signed an anti-protest trespass bill. Have you seen that or read that, Ramar? No, I have. No, I have right. not. I, Can I, I you give I, us? Don't read it. Give us okay. the gist. What is he talking about? Uh, it's a breakdown about um. It's trying to, because, you know, a lot of people have been protesting heavily for the last couple of months. You know, a lot of people protest on different yes. things. But with this particular bill, um, and y'all have to read it for more clarity because I only read it one time. From what I remember, it looks like okay. it's out that he is, um, if any area which is restricted, most likely if he has secret service, if you're particular, participating in any protest, and look like any sort, they could arrest you, detain, you know, yada, yada. Like, he's making it more harder for what they call the freedom of speech. You follow? Oh. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, I follow. Yeah. But here, here where the trickology comes in. Number one, you said it's a bill, but it hasn't been passed by Congress. Number one. Um, he, Number two. Is, is it, signed, but, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All I said it's signed, but I don't know if it passed through, but go ahead. Yes, uh, an executive order is not a bill. It's not a law. Executive order is just a, pron a, a pronouncement of something by an elected official. An executive right. order is not a legal order or a lawful order. Most people don't know that. Okay. So they will function to it and thinking it was a real legal order. Now, you're in a, a phony government, so since you're in a phony government, the, the judges and everybody else will will prosecute you for violating that, that law. But you, your rights from Constitution are being violated because it's color of law. It's not real law. So you're going to have to have the knowledge to sue them from the federal government, which would make it go into the Article Three court in order to tell them that that is not a legal law. So I didn't violate anything. Now, I know okay. it's difficult, don't get me wrong, but more okay. the more the people wake up to what we're talking about, the easier it will be. But so many people have been brainwashed into this fictitious government that is really difficult to talk to, to certain people about. Of laws and rules and freedom, because they have no idea what it is. Most people talk to me, say I'm crazy as a loony too, but but it, but but nothing's ever happened to me because I can back up everything I say. I can show you where I got it in in their laws, not my laws, in their laws. But most people don't even want to deal with it. You dig? Mm -hmm. Because they're so locked in to what they normally do, they don't want to. I don't know. They don't want to change, I guess. Well, you know, but if they don't people, start reading, go ahead. Yeah, wait, go ahead, you young man. No, 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 finish, finish what you're saying. If they don't start reading, go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah, if they don't start reading, they'll always be in bondage. They'll always be slaves if they don't start reading. But see, you got a hell of a, a, a problem with reading because you're going to notice that and I'll say this to you, I, I've said every 
so-called citizen in the United States, quote unquote, of America, quote unquote, that has graduated from these public schools is mm -hmm. nothing more than a moron, a total mm -hmm. idiot. I don't care. I don't care if you got a PhD, a master's, a bachelor's, high school, college. It don't matter because all they did was train you to be a better slave in the system. Yeah, all from you have sure. judges and lawyers that don't know what I know. Yes, and I can show them what I know, and they mm -hmm. don't want to hear it. And the weird thing about because Walmart, they're making and the weird yep. thing about it, March, and it goes back to. What is education? Again, and I've been emphasizing from what I've followed from others and what I've come to the realization from my own eyes that said this is not no education. This is a training. Because true education yes. is real. That's when you are really free, when you're actually outside of all parameters, thinking outside box in all aspects. And some what is yes. already indoctrinated, yes. what is what people are assume that what they're supposed to know. You know, and anybody that, that yeah. goes any higher, and mind you, it's the same thing The higher the education, the more dumber the people get. Some of them think that they made it after they reached and got their big certificate or their doctrine. And, you know, and mind you, and at the end of it, they say you got all these loans, payback, all that stuff. And I said, what have you really attained? Yep. Really? You have not really attained nothing because you're still a slave. You got a doctrine. You're still working for somebody. And usually if, you, if this is the highest yep. form of education, why are you still working for somebody? That's one of these questions I can't, yep, I throw yep. up across and they, they can't articulate give me an answer. So it tells right there what is falsification of anything. You yep, know? Yep. Even what Amos Lewis yep, said best. Yep. You, your consciousness, you, it's really the falsification of consciousness. You know? What you think you know, you don't, yes, you don't know. Until yes. you, you know. Correct. When, when, when you start, your eyes open and then you, people come at you or whatever. That's when you know you, you, you know you're on the right path. You know? Yeah, that's how it's so, you know, you're right on the I, money. I, I, yeah, so I don't really, don't, I don't really don't go by these so-called educated fools because they dumb. And at times, you know, the only thing I can say probably do my own due diligence, research, but overall, I mean, our people, you know, they, they gonna have to really see that with their own eyes, and it, it's coming because you know at times things are gonna get rougher, and they gonna find answers. If they don't find answers now, then they better off being six feet under. That's all I gotta say. Yes, you're totally correct. You're totally correct. And I, I admire you that you have the insight. You sound like you're kind of a young man, maybe 40, 45. But you sound like you, you're right on the right target. So stay on that path, and you'll, you'll see success and freedom. Stay on that path. All right? We have another caller. Seven, seven, Go ahead. 7736. Seven, yep. 773396. Hello, Bill. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Great. Yes, Hi, we can. Ron. Great. How you doing, Ron? Uh, I want to ask, Ron, uh, in regards to in regards to, is it possible to, when police officers do sweeps, so to speak, say they're at the corner and they flag you down because you have to have probable cause to stop any traveler. And and they they take your license and hand you a ticket, whether it is for something, it does not matter. But to do sweeps like that, Ron, is it possible to, to dig into some archives and but maybe either do something to sue to get that money back since it was an illegal ticket anyway? Yeah. Yes. 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 And to, to, you need before to you, start. Before you start, before you start, Ron, I want to say that yeah. I have all the list of tickets that I have paid over uh, a, a lot of, you know, years. And I'm looking at tickets from, I'm talking back maybe in the 90s. And, again, the initial <laughs> issue is this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them paid for. Because, wow. you know, they say in order to get this job, you have you can't have any tickets. So you have to pay these tickets off or whatever. You know, it, it, it depends on what you want to apply for. But the initial issue is this. Yeah. If the ticket was illegal in the, in, from jump, is it possible to take this information somewhere and try to get them promissory notes back. Well, I doubt if you'll ever get what you've already paid, because number one, there is no money. Whatever it, whatever instrument you use to pay the ticket, they cashed it and it disappeared. I don't care right, what it right. was. 
it you catch it and disappear. Now, let's start from from scratch. Why are they stopping you? And why are they setting up this line? What are, what are exactly. they talking about? Exactly. Well, okay. I remember my coworker told me that this happened to him recently where he was stopped by police officers at a corner or on a street flagging, you know, random okay. cars down. This, yep. See, keep in mind, this happened and, to me a mere 20 and, years hold ago. Hold it, hold it. Okay. All right. When they flagged him down, what happened? They gave uh, him a ticket? For, he said, this the same thing happened to me 20 years ago. Asked for my license and came back with a couple of tickets. Okay, we're going to give you a couple of tickets. And All right. keep in mind, go ahead, go ahead. Stop, stop, stop. You're going too fast. What did they give you the tickets for? A couple of tickets for what? It could be for, like, uh, uh, anything. That, Ron, trust me, anything. Um, no, uh, well, no, no I tickets? can't trust you. Wait, 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 wait. When they give you a ticket, it's a contract. On that contract, it has to say what the ticket is about. So I'm asking you, what are those tickets about? Give me one. You ain't got to give me all of them. Just tell me. Uh, when they flag you down, what do you mean by that? Flag me down, and look at my say, license, and say, give me a ticket. And I, say a, a broken tail light. All right, stop, stop. Was the tail light broken? I don't think so. I don't. Was it broken? Mm. Wait a minute. Come on now. You don't open up a can of worms. Yeah, so I know. I I'm know. Asking but, you, but I'm, well, I'm, me, okay, but I'm speaking. You know, give me something I'm else. Speaking, give me oh, something else. Uh, like what? Uh, 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 a crooked sticker on the window. Something stupid. Wait, uh, wait. It's not stupid if they put it in writing. Okay? So let's take the crooked sticker in the window. So they put in the ticket that it's a crooked sticker in the window, and they give you a ticket. Now, my okay. question to you, why did you not, why did you pay that ticket? Because you, th you thought that you owed, assuming that you thought you owed. I'm telling you that that ticket was a contract. And I'm telling you, according to TILA, Truth in Lending Act, Regulation Z, you can look it up, you have a right to cancel any contract within 72 hours. So you should have written on the contract, I refuse to contract with you and send it back in. Well, Ron, you know, you best believe, had I known who you were, that, that would have happened 20 years ago. I'm merely speaking about all the ones that I did pay, and I didn't know who you were at the time. Well, that's your problem. Well, that's, that's, that's water over the bridge. Let's not waste time on that, because you paid it out of your ignorance of not knowing or doing research. You assumed that the, that the traffic cop was correct, and you just paid the ticket. Because, see, you always have, I had one of my students call me. She got a ticket, a parking ticket. I told her, what, she, what I told her in class, she did that. They sent her a white card and doubled the ticket. And I said, now you got to go in to phase two, which is call up, get an appointment, take down the paperwork that you have, and show the judge that you are following the corporate law of the United States of America, which says you can cancel a contract in three days. She did that. She called me back and said, Ron, I love you. They threw the ticket out. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen for everyone, but there is a process of due process of law where tickets can be canceled because you refuse to accept the contract. Now, let me make it clear to you, because you're a female. Let me make it a little clear. If you don't do it, you know of women that's done. They go into a dance on Saturday. They don't have a perfect dress, so they go to the biggest store, buy the dress, get it fitted, looking good, Go to the dance on Saturday, take the dress back on Monday, and get the money back. How do well, they do uh, that? Of course, of, of course, we do that. I know that. I know that. Why do, the, well, the, how the do you get it? Come on, the sister, reason. sister, stop it! You're not. We're, we're carrying a, on a a conversation. If you know that, you never ask. How is that possible to do that? Why is it legal for you to do that? No. How do you get no. away with that? 
How do you get away with buying an item on Friday and taking it back Monday after you used it through the weekend? And nobody asks you any questions. How can they do that? You never because, asked that question. The, the store said that there is a policy for that. No, they didn't. The federal okay. government said uh, there's a policy. So a ticket is a ticket is a ticket. A contract is a ticket. So it's the same thing with a contract, or better yet, a police ticket. It's a contract. You can get rid of it in 72 hours. Okay. Same thing. That same I, thing. Okay, but see, Ron, that I know now. What I'm asking is, what, with with any police officers doing these so-called sweeps, which are, in a sense, illegal, is that fraud, and can you get your promissory notes back? That's the initial question. All right. Is that My fraud? answer to you is, it's not fraud until you declare it fraud. Now, okay. that's my answer. Okay. They get away with it every day because people are dumb and don't realize what's going on and don't question what's going on. So right. if you don't exercise your right, you don't have a right. So no, it's not fraud. you got to turn them in before it becomes fraud. Right, okay. Next question. <laughs> okay. You get it? I ain't trying right. to... I'm not trying to be funny, but I had to nail it because I know everybody else is listening, and I'm trying to use you to answer you, but at the same time give this information to everybody else. Yeah, Chill I understand. Up. I understand because, up, be, because the hardest thing is to convince uh, people when I speak about how what I did, what you told me to do about signing that ticket, and you best believe my ticket yep. was thrown out. I got my license back. I'm just merely thinking about the what? ones that, and keep in mind, Rob, this is the first ticket I've ever challenged. I've ever challenged this ticket. And, and, and it Are works. you the one that... <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm thinking, okay. well, let me see if I can get well, the other things let... from, the, from the past, if it All is right. fraud. All right. Have you ever heard of the, I'll, get, I'll call it a slogan, I, you got to pay your dues? If you want to be here, you got to pay your dues. You can't walk out and be on first string. You got to pay your dues and be on third string, second string, and work your way to first string. They call that, you got to pay your dues. You got a, a, a saxophone, you can't walk up and be front man. You got to pay your dues and be back up first, and then work your right. way up to the front. You got it? Okay. So all okay. that money you pay, you paid your dues. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Beth. Right. Thank you, Ron. Okay. <laughs> oh, did I take too long on on her, Beth? No, you explained it. You, you that's what uh, other people is listening, so they get it. They got it. Uh, all right. You got another caller? Uh yeah. They just went off, so they they might call. All right. And uh, for all those right. that is, um, we got like five minutes left, but we'll go over some. And you can call yes. 472158041, and you will be able to hear the rest of the show over the phone. Go ahead, Ron. All right. All right. I got information from Black Laws Dictionary, the fifth edition. So it's, I know it's in the fifth or the sixth edition of Black Laws Dictionary. This is going back to why we today are in the condition we're in, why they're killing our young people and not going to jail, why the prosecutors can manipulate cases to make them come out in their best interest, not the victim's best interest. It all stems from a case that was cited in 1857. I think that's the year. It don't matter. You can look it up. 1857. It's called the Dred Scott case. Dred Scott case. Dred Scott was a black slave that was in enslaved in the United States. Not America. In United States. There was no United States of America in 1857. And the judge ruled, the Supreme Court judge, his name was Thaddeus Tanning, T-A-N-N, 
Why, Tanny? He ruled. Now listen to this case, the Dred Scott case, the case in which the United States Supreme Court held that descendants of Africans who were imported into this country and sold as slaves were not included nor intended to be included under the word citizen in the Constitution. Rather, emancipated or not, and remain without rights or privileges except such as those which the government might might grant them. This is in the law dictionary. What the hell is wrong with our Negro pundit? Wait a minute, Ron. Okay, this is in 1857. This was before yeah. uh, 1871 yeah. when the corporation was developed. Yeah. Right? Okay, yeah. so they said that the slaves, the people that, the slave, not the people that was, all, the indigenous people that was already here. Okay, you can say that. Go ahead, I'll, I'll let you say that. Because they called everybody slaves. But we were not in the United States. We were in America. Okay. I think that's what confuses everybody. Yeah, the United good. States was only 13 colonies. Keep that in mind. United States, coming from eight, uh, 1776, Declaration of Independence, coming from the founding of the United States, which was 1789, when they elected George Washington, the first president, it only pertained to 10 square miles. I thought I read that. What did I do with my... Did I, yeah. did I, here it is. Yeah. Did I read that? It's only 10 square miles. You got it? Yeah. So in the 10 square miles, they ruled that Dred Scott, being a descendant of Africans who were imported into this country, into imported into what? United States. We were already here. They had to word it like this today so that we would know that we were already here. So they said, hell, that descendants of Africans who were imported into this country and sold as slaves in the United States, 13 colonies, over here. When I say over here, I'm talking about the East Coast were not included nor intended to be included under the word citizen. So every time they use citizen in the Constitution, the organic Constitution, they were talking about Europeans. Europeans. When I tell you that the Declaration of Independence was set up and signed by six European nations. Six European nations. I can't name them off today, but I think next week I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that in next week. And I'm going to give you all of this. I can tell you where to find it. Six European nations. And it, George Washington, who had made friends with the Moors. Now, remember what I told you. Moors are black in color. But all blacks are not Moors, because there's more to a Moor than being black. He is a righteous person. He lives by the principles and science of the earth. Anyone else that are black, and we got them out there today, because what are they doing? Robbing, stealing, raping, murdering, fornication, I don't know. All kinds. Lying preachers, lying ass preachers. And I'm going to tell you about that too. Preachers. Because they was part of the 13th Amendment. The preachers were part of the 13th Amendment. And they defied the government. So they are niggers in, their, in the right of not being Moors. I'm using that term because all of this big circle is a circle of black labeled persons known as black colors, niggers. Afro-Americans, African-Americans, all of them names are labels that the United States gave them. But in that circle was a group called Moors. And 
United States hate the Moors, and the Moors know who Moors are. I know who I am, and I know a nigga when I see one because he acts that way. Now, I don't know if I'm making this clear to you, but you can look at them and tell. That's all they are. Mm -hmm. They steal. They rob. They loot. You know, you don't want to be around nobody like that. But due to the ignorance of the masses today, the news media, in accompaniment with the, with the government, lumps all blackies or all persons of color into one bundle. Nice and fat, fat, which makes it difficult for me, Ron March, to be free because I'm not part of them. I'm not part of them. I don't rob, steal, and loot. I raise my family. I do everything I'm supposed to do. I honor my mother and my father. I don't use all that nasty language and stuff talking about, you know, my mama and my sisters and all my women, all that kind of stuff. A lot of us do it because we don't know any better, but that's no excuse. Because everybody has a mama. So every mama was a sister or a woman to somebody. And for these rappers to talk all this yang-yang about females, they should be murdered and shot in the street. Yeah, baby, get, get rid of them. They're no good. What are you going to do with them? And that's what the Europeans are doing. Hat on backwards, pants down on his ass, talking, you know, crazy and all kind of stuff. Hey, somebody needs to get to him and let him know you got to get on the path of righteousness, brother, to live. Definitely to be free. Now, don't get me wrong. The system is set up to keep him off the path. So it's my job to keep doing what I do to let all of y'all know what is truth and what is not truth. So that you do know, you can't say at the end of the day, what well, I didn't know. Oh, yes, you did. You listened to Ron March. He told you, damn it, a year ago, 10 years ago, he told you. If he didn't tell you, somebody else told you, you didn't give a damn at that time because you was partying down. Child support and all that crazy crap, trying to figure out how not to pay, having babies all over the, oh, all of that is no good. Hope I ain't preaching, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like one of them old jack leg ass preachers. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but you make it. Yes. Sense. Okay, now. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. All right, no, go ahead. Oh, no, that's good. Some, somebody needed to hear that. Now, the Dred Scott case, when that came up, um, we were dealing with in America, not in the USA, right? Yes, 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 ma'am. Okay, okay. And we ran every, we controlled everything. In America. That's why, in America. That's why I told you that the first civil war, you don't even know about the first civil war, and that's the one that was fought between the Iroquois Confederation and the Powhatan Confederation. The Iroquois won that war. But as they were winning, United States chose to attack the Iroquois Confederation. You got it? Yeah. So Machiavelli and even the Democrat and Republican Party, the corporations will support both candidates. So whoever wins, they own. When a mayor runs for mayor mayoralship, they look over the best running candidate. Now, if Ron March is in there, they, you know they're not going to support me. So they're going to pump more money into their candidate and put him on a pedestal, give him plenty of money to go just do all kinds of powerful stuff to out-politic Ron March. So they ain't got to worry about Ron March. So if Ron March is not running, they'll support the Democrat and the Republican candidate or the two finalist candidates. So whichever one wins, they don't care because they own them, whoever wins. Because neither one of them got any money. We don't know enough to support our candidate with finance. So here comes somebody with a 200, well, 200,000 because these elections, like, for example, the money that... Uh, Oh, white boy spent, I bet you it set a record for all 
mayoral races in the city of Detroit. The one that Duggan won. Yeah. They could not afford to let any black in because they needed that European. Yeah. And you see how they fought, struggled, lied, cheated to keep him on the ballot. Yeah. And then they told them those, <laughs> those Negro pundits and civil rights all-stars to get on TV and beg the people to vote for him because we need him to straighten out the city of Detroit. It's a shame. Yeah. It's a total disgrace. So we can't really be angry at them because they went to the niggas, and you can do anything with a nigger. You can get a wino in the alley and give him a new jug and have him go down and do whatever you want to do. I've done that myself when I was in military. When I was out in Utah, they had so many rough black, uh, blackies, I was scared to go to the nightclub until we figured out what to do. We bought at least ten-fifths of wine every night when we went out and gave it to them drunks. And they protected us like we was superstars. Yes, we did. Uh, your friend is back on the line, Ron. Let's, let me pull him uh, back. Oh, Lord, here he comes. I'm going to be quiet this time. Come on uh, in, brother. <laughs> here he comes. No, you, you ain't going to be quiet. <laughs> 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 let, me, let me, I just, I, 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 I just want you to understand that w when you start explaining the United States of versus America, it's just so difficult for us to separate the two as laymen and get an understanding the way that you understand it. And that's and that's part of the issue. But I want to bring up what you brought up what you brought up about Detroit. I was listening to MTR on the way home and they said that y'all's um, that the manager your your money manager or whatever they called that guy they they appointed yeah. the, the governor appointed has uh resigned <laughs> And that y'all out of bankruptcy, and the Detroit is saying, right. "Go ahead, I'm gonna hang up. I'll listen." <laughs> right. right. <laughs> now, well, no. you know that had that. Now, now, let me say that there were negative overtones in that. He's okay. totally correct, uh -huh. but in order to save Detroit, they done stole everything we got. Yeah, that's what that was about. Yes, yes. So. That's my that's my nephew out of Minnesota, mm -hmm. and he and I study every day on the on the on the telephone. He'll be calling me tonight or tomorrow. We'll get into it, okay. but we have some powerful conversations. But he's totally correct. He has t difficult following me, my line of thought, because, like he said, you got to remember that the uh, United States and and America are two different entities. Yeah, that's, they cheated. That's, yeah. Yep. Go ahead. They but cheated when they hooked them up. But see, if you have a corporation, you can name it anything as long as it's not been used before. And okay. Nobody thought to use it. Go ahead. So okay, let's see. So okay, we had the America. That's where the indigenous people. That's where we were originally in America. All the time. Yes. They, they El Morocco. El Morocco. We were in El Morocco, okay. which is America, is, is Arabic for America. Okay, El Morocco. Then, El Morocco. Yes. in 1789, that's when they formed the United States. That's the 13 colonies, right? When they recognized it with a charter from America. Okay, with a charter. Remember that. Okay, charter yes. from America. Now they went yes. 1889, then they went to 1871, and then they came up with the United States of America, so they incorporated this United States. Yes. That's correct. All illegal, because they never had permission to do that. And that's why they used the term, listen carefully, Sinai. Did you ever look that up, Beth? S I N E, one word, D I E, Sinai. That's how you, that's how I pronounce it, Sinai. Okay. 
Is that where the, they ended the meeting? And Yes. That was the ending of Antebella and the beginning of post Antebella. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm getting to be a professor at this stuff. Yeah. It was the ending of Antebella and the beginning of post Antebella. So you need to know that as you read in those eras, because they flip flop, flip flop. They know what they're saying, but you'll take for granted when they say United States, or they say United States of America, or they say Americans, and they say United States. And they call the citizens of United States were always called pilgrims, colonialists, frontiersmen. You see what I'm saying? Uh, stuff like that, where you never realize that you, they're talking about crooks. They all were crooks, and they all were Europeans that came from the six original uh, countries, European nations that signed the Constitution of United, to sign the Declaration of Independence. Okay, so let, let, let me see. Let me break it down. And so I'm not the only one here. Okay, so right. the indigenous people were the original people that was in America that was called El Morat. Yes. Then they came in 1789 and they formed the United States, and that came from a charter from uh, the Moors, from the indigenous people. It was yes. built with the 13 colonies. And these yes. white folks here, correct? The United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then they went down yes. 1871, and they took the United States, and then they formed that into the United States of America, which and made it into a corporation. Correct. So yes, from the United States and the United States of America, all of that is is fake. I mean, all of that is illegal. Yes. Yes. Because there's only one contract, and that's the organic constitution of the United States. Well, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, that contract was made with the Americans. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Yes. That's our, okay. So here you read, listen, you read the preamble to the constitution. We the people of the United States, the Moors and the indigenous people, we're known as we the people. You got it? So in order to it's not the, the, the we the people is not the the thirteen colonies, it's not the No no, 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 no. We the people are the Americans from El Morocco. Okay. And even when I use the word I'll get to it. Now listen, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, stop, let's back up, they spell more, M-O-R-E. Oh. Read it again. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, you got it. So I'll read it again. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect perfect union. So we're talking about, we're trying to form a more indigenous union because more is spelled M-O-O-R but you can pronounce it and spell it M-O-R-E. They pay, they put in M-O-R-E. Gotcha. Now we can debate that all night but you can't call me wrong and I won't call you wrong. But if you read it the way I'm telling you to read it, you'll get a better understanding. So let me start again. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, and ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity, we ordain and establish this Constitution for, for the United States of America. Gotcha. So 
you're talking about two different governments, United States and United States of America. Gotcha. All right. It makes it much easier to understand. You got it. Yeah. Yep. You got it. So we're looking at a government that is it's collapsing. And I can't collapse it. You know you you know you can't do it with guns. So anybody out there thinking that that rioting and looting and burning is gonna do it, you're out of your pee picking mind. Stop it. I I have no part of that. I want that to go on record. None, none. I don't want no part of that. I'm not proclaiming that because the creator's doing all the work. Why would I want to burn and loot and shoot and be killed or have you people killed? The creator's doing this because we're in the age of Aquarius. They're cleansing the earth. They get rid of all these liars and cheaters. And and wrongful people, they're getting rid of them. You would never think that the exposure of the United States is like pulling your pants down. Somebody done seen everything. They can't get their pants back up. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you know the, wor the world looked at Ferguson? Yeah. And less than a week later, they witnessed, witnessed, Beth, a murder in New York. Yeah. And no one has been indicted. Not charged with the crime or put in jail. They haven't even had a court. Why? You can't put a police officer on trial because you, you can burn him. I'd ask him, the first thing I would ask him, why do you do, you do two Oaths. Which one do you live by? I bet you he got to say he lived by the first oath, because that's where the, the the what they call it the blue line of defense or whatever they call that when they all tell the same lie, whatever that thing is. You know what I'm talking about? All police officers don't tell on each other. They got to call the I don't know what it is, but you don't want to put them on the on the stand because everybody be in trouble if you put them on the stand. And everything you saw that union boss do that looked like something out of a circus with his hair combed straight back. You know who I'm talking about. And he talked about all of that. The the, the mayor threw, me, threw us under the bus. And all of that kind of madness. Yeah. If I was the mayor, I'd fire him. He's got to be on the payroll of uh, the city. He had to be hired by the city. He had to be hired through the chief of police. I called the chief of police and say, who was that idiot? They say, he's a union man. Fire him. We'll go to court and fight it. Fire him. You see what I'm saying? Now, we know it ain't that easy, but I'm just saying. The mayor has the power to do that. But they don't. Yeah, they because do a, lot of, a lot of them answer to the governor. Yes. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But now remember, Wilson came from a, another suburban city. I think they said it was 38 miles away. That their police department was so corrupt that the federal government made them collapse the whole process. Did you know that? Yeah, I heard that. That's how he got into Ferguson. Yep. So why can't they dissolve Ferguson and start all over? Bring in a new chief of police? But see, they need to vote that mayor out. They need to recall the mayor because Michael uh, uh, Michael did not have a fair trial, and the police did it. So the people should recall the mayor. And they all could register to vote in order to recall the mayor, and they got enough votes to do it. Now, yeah. you know it's going to be some, yep, there's going to be some legal argument because they didn't vote the mayor in, but if they all go down tomorrow and register, and then they can sign the petition to recall the mayor. 
Because the mayor hired, hired that dumbass chief of police, and the chief of police hired them on crooked uh, Ku Klux Klan police officers. Because we had that happen here in the suburb of Troy when the uh, the uh, gay community recalled the mayor because she said something about the community. Yes, 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 they did. Yes, yes. they did. Same thing. Yes, they could do the same thing. But see, this is where I fault. And I'm faulting them because they're brainwashed. Yes. I fault our legal pundits, Negro pundits. I fault our civil rights all-stars. And I fault them jackleg preachers. Now, next week, we're going to talk about, and I'm going to give you the, the topic right now, Beth. All right. Three is called Three Badges. And Thirteenth Amendment. Three no, badges. no, 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 no. Three badges and slavery. That's what it's called. Three, three badges. Slavery. And slavery. Yes. Three, like the number three. three. Yes. And badges like a uh, police badge. I don't know why they label it badges, but I got the information. I've been I've been tearing up that internet trying to find this information, and I got it. Okay. All right. All right. Badges and slavery. Okay, Ron. So yep. we went uh, almost a half an hour over. All right. Do you have any phone call? We don't want to leave nobody hanging. Oh, they um, they're they're not uh, they're listening, but I don't see any hands raised. All right. All right. Well, till next week, Bev. I enjoyed it, and and everybody stay listen carefully to the. A uh, Feinstein, Feinstein, the female out of California, who has the indictments from the United Nations on the CIA, George Bush, that old ugly uh, Cheney, all of them are under the gun, getting ready to get indicted. Wow! And most Wait. of those, uh -huh. yes, most of those ex and former—they don't call them ex; they call them former CIA directors. They all had a part in all of that torture, waterboarding, and all that kind of stuff. And, and the United Nations. World Court, right? Yes, it's coming from the World Court. Okay. Yes. And they're making you think it's coming from Reinstein, uh, 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 the, the female. It ain't coming from her. Okay. That's, what, see, that's the cover they put on this stuff. Because they'll tell you in a minute, we don't recognize the United Nations, and they're a damn lie. Okay. Okay? Well, wait a right, minute. Ben. Wait, wait, don't go. We got one more person raised their hand. Wait a minute. Uh, area code 804. Hey, Beverly, and uh, Brother Ron Moss. Look, I just got one little yes, small sir. question, right? One little small okay. question. When you, All right. when you put this... When you put this type of truth to the average white man, can he give a proper a rebuttal? No. Because he is dumb as our Negroes and niggas. Yeah. The, the, name of the, the name of the game by the corporations is keep them both dumb. Yeah. yeah. That's why they killed Martin Luther King, because white people began to listen to King, and they called King a meeting every Saturday with Elijah Muhammad. And the FBI said if they hook up with King's mouth and Muhammad's, and Muhammad's uh, uh, knowledge and the black and white civil rights folks, United States is through. So they said we got to kill that nigga. And that's what they did. So, and look, one, okay. more, one more little small question. How can, how can we really, <laughs> really get this thing done? How can we get this thing done the way that you... You building and teaching. How can we get this thing done? How can we get these white people you, on the back? Because I want my all right, ass back. All right. Okay. I can't. What? How can you? What did, I didn't hear the last. I time. heard him. I heard him. He said he wanted his back. Now here's the answer to that. Once you free yourself, you will free all of the Europeans from fooling with you. Because if you get on the path of righteousness, they cannot get on that path. And there's nothing that you have coming to you in retrospect 
Because you gave it to them. They didn't take it. You gave them everything that they got. They didn't take it. Nobody kicked your door down, took your money. You went down there and bought this and bought that, signed up for this and signed up for that. So you ain't got nothing coming in hindsight. But if you free yourself, you'll be going into a future of nothing but freedom, justice, and equality. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, you do. Now look. Little question. Yes. One more little small question. It it almost slipped slipped me, right? Uh, uh, This is the last. I tell you what. Hold it. Hold it. All right, hold it. You're going to ask the question and hang up, and I'll answer. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's that's fair. All right. That's fine. All right, go ahead. Uh, Okay, I had got in a little confrontation with a group of white people, right? And they said, they told me, they told me, if I ain't like America, get out. I said, no, you get your ass, get out. I was already here. <laughs> when you put your ass, I gave you 13 little colonists. And they ain't say nothing back. Okay. Not one word. Not they right. one of them. Okay. But it sounds like you won that. It sounds yeah, like you won that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't tell me it's so free. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll hey. give you some more when you hang up. All right. Hey. Peace. Okay. Come back next week. All right. Okay. Man, yeah. I'll just say this. I'll just say this in the ending. When he, when he said what he said to them, it's difficult to argue with the fool. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like wrestling with a pig. You in a a pig pen. I'm wrestling to get out of the pig 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 pen, and that pig is wrestling to keep me in the pig pen. <laughs> Cause he loves the mud, the mud. Right. You see what I'm saying? You can't win a, a wrestling match with a pig in a pig pen. So for him to talk and attack. Not only white people, because they're dumb as hell, but even to attack Negroes that don't want to hear it and don't want freedom or believe in Christianity. You got a problem, because they like pigs in a pig pen. So your best bet is to stay away from them so you won't get frustrated. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right, so I'm out. All right, Rob. We'll talk to you next uh, Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Yes. All right. So, if it, and if anyone has any small donation, go to my website. Okay. Tap me some money. I need. But what is your cash. What is your website? Ron uh, only Ron Mark Show. Just Google that. None of that dot com and all of that. Just Ron March Show. And when it comes up, tap the first one that comes up. It'll take you to my site. And I have a pen pal hookup where you can either purchase some books, purchase some knowledge and wisdom, or give me a donation. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Ron. Right, so appreciate to you. next week. Okay. All right. Peace and Bye. love.